Hello and welcome to this week's Pen Energy Video News Update. I'm JB Vance. Dominating headlines worldwide, the Japanese earthquake and tsunami have caused a major meltdown at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Amid fires and explosions, radiation levels are reaching alarming levels. With nuclear power in question in Japan and other countries, including China, Germany, Sweden, India, and South Korea, demand for natural gas and LNG is expected to rise as more power is produced from the hydrocarbon. Nonetheless, refineries in Japan have been shut in and damaged by the natural disaster, which many help to boost the price of oil in the long run. Due to the Japanese disaster, oil prices initially retreated from the $105 mark to $97 a barrel, but West Texas crude has gained again on the NYMEX. Additionally, as violence in Libya continues, oil prices are trading at more than two-year highs, a fact reflected at the gas pump, prompting calls for President Obama to open the Strategic Petroleum Reserves to ease pricing. Ending months of discussions, Tolol Oil has finally inked an agreement with the government of Uganda concerning its oil assets in the Lake Albert Rift Basin. The agreement covers the extensive tax disputes and enables Tolol to farm out interest in its acreage to Sinoc and Total. More than 35 successful exploration wells on Tolo's three blocks, Uganda is largely considered a new oil province, although a lack of infrastructure in the area requires a larger investment to bring production to market. The construction of a pipeline and refinery in Uganda is already in the works. In discoveries this week, Shell made a significant deep water oil discovery with its Garagong Well offshore Brunei in Southeast Asia. Initial data estimate the field size at several hundred million barrels of oil in place. Appraisal drilling is planned. In Oklahoma, American Petro Hunter has identified a three-zone oil find transecting the Mississippi, Simpson, and Woodford Shale formations. In the U.S. Gulf of Mexico, Bomber has issued its second deepwater drilling permit since the Macondo accident last April. BHP Billiton will restart drilling on a production well in the Shenzhou development. BHP was in the process of drilling the well when the deepwater drilling moratorium was enacted. In related news, U.S. independent Apache Corporation has joined the majors in the Marine Well Containment Company, which is developing readily deployed deep water oil spill containment solutions for use in the Gulf of Mexico. Additionally, Technip has awarded an equipment contract on the expanded subsea containment system, which is expected to be completed in 2012. Currently, there are only two deep water containment solutions. One is the system created by the super majors, and the other is a system created by Helix. Both deep water drilling permits have been issued to utilize the Helix fast response system. In midstream news, TransCanada's Keystone XL pipeline has entered into the final stages of regulatory review. Although the company must leap additional environmental hurdles, TransCanada is hopeful that the major pipeline project will be sanctioned by the close of 2011 and commence operations by 2013. Connecting Canadian oil sands with U.S. markets, the Keystone Cushing extension began operations in June of last year. The more than 1,600-mile Keystone XL project proposes to transport crude from Alberta, Saskatchewan, Montana, South Dakota, and Nebraska, where it would connect to the existing section. The pipeline would then connect Cushing, Oklahoma, with terminals in the Gulf Coast of Texas. The project cost for the Keystone Pipeline system is currently estimated at $12 billion. These stories and much more are found at www.penenergy.com. Thank you.